Hi guys, Thomas Henley here from Asperger's Growth and today I've got a video for you about prebiotics and probiotics. So you may know that prebiotics and probiotics are two things that are talked kind of a little bit in this if you have any involvement in the scientific community. There are links from mental health to gut health and we have these things called like bacteria um, called a microbiota, which is the name for all of the all of the bacteria in our intestines. And these prebiotics and probiotics are important things for gut health, which have been shown in some some studies to have a small impact on mental health. There is a very nice chap who, for the life of me, I can't, I can't remember his name now because I filmed the I filmed the content quite a while ago. Um, but I'll put his name in the description and stuff. I feel really bad now for not remembering. But he's a really cool guy. He's, he's doing his projects on these two prebiotics and probiotics. He does a little introduction demonstration where he gave us samples of things that he brought in. Then after the presentation, I asked him whether we could do a one-on-one -on -one interview where I asked him a few questions about his work that he's been doing and... He asked me a few a few questions, and we, we kind of conversed a little bit. Um, I think we had to shoot the shoot the whole interview twice. Firstly, because my iPad didn't record for a little bit because the storage was full up, um, so that was good preparation by my part. And uh, secondly, because we wanted to make sure that um, he got all that all that he wanted to say out, and made sure that it didn't come out come out wrong, or it didn't come across in the you know. Different way, you know how it is. You gotta shoot. You gotta shoot a few, few times just to make sure that the information is kind of fluent and flows. So before we get into the presentation and then the interview after, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, a lowdown on some of the the key terms that you need to know about prebiotics and probiotics, and then we get us kicked a few uh, few jugs. I am in the lab right now, so this is why. Well, you can see a lab behind me. I don't know why I'm saying that. You can see, you can see it's different. As I said, it was about six, seven months ago. So you, I won't have any of this facial hair, I won't have this, this hair or anything. So don't be surprised. So let's have a look on my trusty old laptop. Make sure it's not in the shot there. So I'm just gonna pull up some general information firstly. So firstly, the dictionary, the English dictionary um, describes prebiotics as a non-digestible food ingredient that promotes growth of beneficial microorganisms in the intestines. So probiotics are described as a, a microorganism introduced into the body for its beneficial qualities. Some of the more important and beneficial probiotic strains, which are different species of bacteria, be Streptococcus vermifilis, Bacillus latrosporus. There's, there's many of these. I think I remember one of these in my my personal pre probiotic that I take. So Bifidobacterium. We've got a few, few different ones of those. Um, but there are also strains that we want to avoid. The harmful bacteria are the bacteria that cause dysbiosis, um, which means when the the gut's all out of whack and all the Metabolism has changed and then inflammation causes. It's, it's generally not a good thing. And there are links between inflammation and mental health. Um, so I'm going to put the laptop down for a sec. And um, I'll let you get on with the video because I don't want to spoil too much of the information. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, this one yeah, has carrot, ginger, garlic. It's good. That one. It's quite nice. <laughs> it's not as strong as the pink one. The pink one is strong. No, it does, it does sting, doesn't it? Do you want to come through and just pull it out? No, 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 it's watching your face is really easy. No, it's the way it is, mate. It's fun. I don't think I can commit to this as a diet. But yeah, there's no rush to get through anything. It's just... Yeah, just make sure that it's clear and less, maybe less sciencey. Okay, I've got Phil here today. Um, he's a final year student uh, studying biology. With yep. Spanish. With Spanish, that's right. So you, you've been to Spain. You've done. Yep. Done a bit Spain, of research, yeah. and you've decided that you wanted to do kind of a, a media 
kind of base projects. Yeah, I, I didn't like the lab life. It wasn't really for me, so I, I'm much more interested in science communication. And in, yeah. Okay, so uh, Phil does um, did a presentation earlier on today on prebiotics and probiotics and their implications on mental health. So he he brought along quite a few samples of food and stuff for us to try, and he also gave us quite an in-depth kind of degree level presentation on um, and how it works and the mechanisms involved. So firstly, I'm 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 Thomas uh, from Asperger's Group, and okay. um, my, the basis of my uh, YouTube channel is to improve people's awareness of autism. Um, so that's to to help people with autism um, to try and get tips and benefits and and ways of coping with certain things that might have come across so like uh, social stuff mm. um, stuff to do with the media and also to do with like, like the health and stuff I just want to ask firstly about the kind of motivation that you've had uh, to do this topic so I realise that it's um, it's self-chosen so you ch- chose yes, to do yes to, to a degree I guess um I'm very much interested in, you know, like yourself, mental health, um, psychology, neuroscience and stuff. And I kind of wanted to, uh, I mean, it, I'm working on this project for a, for a year. You know, it's a long time, so I wanted to make it interesting for myself. So I yeah. wanted to incorporate as much of that stuff as possible into my project. The, the gut has been implicated in influencing brain function. Like it's been shown to affect behavior, cognition and mental health. By a, by a number of pathways that exist between the gut and the brain. So it seemed like a uh, quite an interesting area to get involved in. It's very interesting. And um, it's really, really rapidly emerging as well, so it's the perfect opportunity for me to you know, communicate this to uh, to an audience. So is, is there any reason that you uh, targeted mental health? Yeah, there's quite a lot to do with obesity yeah. and, and gut health, as well as general health, physical health, mm. uh, heart disease and cancers and stuff like that. Yeah, what is, what is your reason for targeting mental health? Um, well, per- personally, I, I've dealt with a lot of anxiety. So okay. the, uh, the interest is for the purpose of self-development, partly. Um, but I, I also think it's a very interesting subject in general. And um, something which is you know, affecting more and more people. It's more and more people are um, feeling more comfortable to open up about uh, certain mental health issues. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you realise the, the spectrum to the spectrum of how many people it, it, it can affect. There's a lot. There's a uh, lot of people who are affected by mental health issues. Absolutely, and I mean, it, it, there's, there's, there's still that stigma there, isn't there? And it needs to be taken more seriously. You know, helping people take um, action, take action, yeah, take action, it. improve their life, uh, improve their, their condition, their state, uh, is yeah, what I'm partly, partly trying to do with this project, I guess. Yeah. Before, after the pres- before and after the presentation, we. Uh, I had a look at some of the food that you you brought in. Uh, some of it uh, Phil made himself, and some of it he also bought from various food stores. So the first uh, product that we've got here is um, uh, com kombucha. 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 Yeah. Is it is it is, it, is there an or- origin to this kind of um, food, or is it? It's found in different parts of the world. It's it's a fermented tea product. So uh, it consists of like a um, kind of a batch of beneficial um, bacteria and uh, yeast, and this is mixed with the uh, the tea and um, lactic acid bacteria ferment uh, ferment the tea, and they create this nice sour taste. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's full of beneficial bacteria, full of probiotics, which have you know been implicated in um, you know physical as well as mental health. So uh, we've also got some other stuff, which is some more kind of stuff that you can bite and chew. Uh, there's got ginger and carrot, um, ginger and carrot here. This, I think this is the stuff that Phil made himself and he brought in for... Yeah, so this, this is all sauerkraut. This is fermented cabbage. And fermented cabbage is extremely boring, so you know I wanted to uh, spice things up a little bit. And um, so I, I used a number of ingredients. Um, to you know, improve the appearance, make it look a bit more appetising, and uh, improve the taste as well. Yeah, they are very, very tasty. So I hope Tom will be able to beetroot and uh, ginger and uh, yeah. So I've got beetroot, ginger, garlic, turmeric, and I've got some ginger and carrot. And that's all with the fermented cabbage. So is this cold sour sour sauerkraut? Yeah, sour it's crap. very popular in Germany. Yeah, it's very. I, I had some of it. Um, my taste buds are pretty selective but i did i did find to 
That's quite, quite nice. I mean, I was kind of expecting to have to sell it on the Saints rather than the, the yeah. taste. Yeah. You know? So I, I anticipated that. Mm -hmm. I made it as, <laughs> as tasty as possible. So we've, we've got the, this stuff here as well. It's, I can't remember the name. Uh, it's called it. kefir yogurt. Yes. Kefir. That's, um, it's kefir. very much like a... Um, very much like yogurt, like a drinkable yogurt, and uh, it actually contains kefir grains. Um, you can buy kefir grains online, and these are um, symbionts of bacteria and yeast, beneficial bacteria and yeast that um, like little grains that you stick in there. Yeah, yeah, like little cauliflower florets, and they um, yeah they ferment the lactose that's in the milk, and they produce lactic acid, which gives it that sour taste. So again, they're full of you know lactic acid bacteria, which are very beneficial for the um, for the gut, and inhibiting pathogens and um, keeping things healthy. Then, so one thing that might be worth no noting is that um, some people with autism or, or or on the autism spectrum might have quite sensitive sensitive taste buds to certain yeah. foods. So some of some of these foods might might not be suitable for people to eat. So yeah, maybe if you're trying to get your um, adolescent or uh, children to um, to eat this stuff, maybe to improve their mental health, might be quite difficult. But yeah. There are some other sources of um, probiotics that you can get, of, of more yeah, kind of absolutely. industrial. Um, yeah, that's that's fair enough. You know, um, you can uh, you can get probiotics in, in capsule form as well as um, as well as in your know, natural foods. And uh, you know, benefits of the capsulated forms are that they contain, you know, specific strains which may have been shown to um, improve particular conditions. Um, so it's good for you know if, you, if you're dealing with uh, you know a, a health disorder condition in particular, you can um, you know kind of research that area and uh, find out which probiotic strains you know have the best potential for, for treating those conditions, and you can buy them in the capsule form. You can sneak them into foods. Uh, undetectable and they can have their, their positive effects. Okay, there's, there's one thing that I mentioned to you earlier about the uh, the chocolate um, biotic yeah. capsules. Yeah, so. I, I haven't heard of that before actually. That's, that's quite interesting. Um, so yeah, basically they're little little sweety chocolate things and they have they have these biotic cultures that are to do to have improving gut health and stuff. I'm not sure whether it'll be as targeted towards mental health. I don't know whether the, the different strains are Good for different things. Um, yes, so that yeah. might be something to, to look into. Yeah, well, I mean, most um, regarding mental health, you know, there there are a number of communication pathways that exist between the gut and the brain. So it's generally thought that keeping keeping the gut healthy can feed back on the brain. Uh, I know, for example, that uh, there's, there's an immune pathway on a healthy gut, um, very high in pathogenic bacteria as opposed to the beneficial probiotic bacteria that you find in fermented foods and the capsules. They that that causes Inflammation within the gut, a lot of pathogenic bacteria causes inflammation within the gut, and inflammation is associated with a number of neurological conditions such as depression, anxiety, ADHD. Yeah, that's just one of the examples and through which you know improving the health of your gut can lower levels of inflammation and help your mental health. Yeah, less inflammation is generally associated with better mental health as well as physical health as well. So, just as kind of a final question, um, can you give any advice on how maybe people with people in general can incorporate this stuff into their diet? Obviously, I'm gonna I'll leave some links about how uh, Phil made made his products, and also maybe to the places that you can you can purchase these. So, yeah, is, is there any advice that you can give about um, incorporating? Them? Well, I would say you know try try the foods. Uh, to be fair, you know, fermented cabbage doesn't sound very appealing, but you can do a lot with it, uh, as I've done here. And um, this stuff oh, yeah, this kimchi, kimchi, yeah, kimchi is, kimchi is delicious. That's you know, fermented cabbage with uh, additional sauces, um, spices, vegetables. It's quite popular in Korea, isn't it? Yeah, very popular in Korea. You, you can do a lot with um, <laughs> with sauerkraut to, to make it to make it taste nice. So I would say experiment with some recipes. It's generally recommended to buy them from um, health food shops rather than supermarkets. So a lot of the um, and... yeah, that, that's yeah, that's a good okay. example. Regarding the, the foods, though, I mean, most supermarkets tend to um, pasteurize a lot of the fermented yes. food products, which okay. kills off a lot of the beneficial bacteria. So yeah, you want to keep it as natural as possible. So um, I would say visit uh, local health food shops, perhaps organic shops, uh, and try your luck there. If not, order them online. Have a go at making it yourself. And, and yeah, uh, if you have the time, if you have the time, if you have the time, yeah.
and if you don't mind your house stinking, stinking of, uh, uh, for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's worth it, yeah. Well, I, I def- I've tried some of them, and uh, I definitely... Well, I, I pretty like them. They were okay. Like, I could have them on the side of... Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't eat them on a daily basis, but it's... Not yeah, it's chomping down... Every, every now and again, every now and yeah. again, a couple of spoonfuls of sauerkraut, a bit of uh, kimchi yogurt, you know, a big glass of kombucha. Uh, yeah, could go a long way. So we talked a bit about the um, how pro- probiotics and prebiotics can help. Yeah, we've not mentioned prebiotics. No, we've not mentioned uh, the term prebiotics. Term. So um, prebiotics are the beneficial microorganisms that you're consuming uh, by eating fermented foods. Uh, prebiotics are the they're indigestible indigestible sources of, of fiber. Um, they pass through the uh, the stomach without being broken down by the stomach acid. They pass through the gastrointestinal tract and they they serve as a substrate for the the beneficial bacteria, the probiotic bacteria, to ferment. And um, this ensures that they they proliferate. You know, it's that you're feeding the good bacteria essentially, and you're assure, ensuring that they they can proliferate and they can become permanent residents on the uh, intestinal wall and um, continue to you know mediate positive effects. Uh, for as long as possible. That would, would, yeah. would one of the benefits would be to have this stuff because you're getting some of the fiber from the cabbage as well. Yeah, I mean, you, you absolutely, you can you can mix both. So, for example, I've used a lot of garlic in my um, in my probiotic recipes, which are very rich in uh, prebiotics. Uh, other sources of prebiotics, you know, quite common, commonly apples, bananas, uh, onions, garlic, as we've said. You know, oats are very rich in fiber, uh, digestible fiber. Uh, yeah, there's so any of this, any of this kind of stuff, but it would it would also help with other aspects of diet. So maybe if your child's struggling to have to um, kind of get the, the amount of vitamins that they need in a diet, maybe it might might be able to help with that. They've got Absolutely, yeah. I mean, stuff, pro- probiotic bacteria um, they essentially pre digest a lot of foods that you, you're eating. You know, so you, they enhance the uh, the nutrient acquisition by consuming these foods. They're they're part, partly digested. You know, so you're you're getting more more nutrients, more vitamins, more bin- mm-hmm. minerals and stuff. So um, yeah, it's it's very very beneficial. Thank you very much for uh, doing this interview. You're very welcome. If you're wanting to get some more videos like this, where I talk to people from different kind of fields of research to do with helping with mental health, then give give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the bell in the corner if you want to see some notifications from later later videos that I'll be uploading. So I'll put some links in the description about the uh, the products you can buy and maybe some links to the instructions to make them. Anyway, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Hopefully I'll be able to talk to you later about the kind of research that you'll be doing. Yeah, if you're interested, I'd be uh, happy to share.